call this the camel squid. It's a nice little four hackle tip, you know, my addition of the jungle cock eyes and what have you. And if, if you recognize this, send me an email um, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. <laughs> There's this spot on the Ho River that I love dearly that disappeared in a flood and the channel closed it off. And uh, I was sitting having lunch one day and with my buddies and the trees that used to be the menace fishing this spot were now basically behind us and quite accessible. <laughs> and I was sitting there and I looked up in the tree and I noticed this section of green line. And I look a little closer and it's an airflow head. It's about seven feet of the front of it and about a seven foot, very heavy sink tip, short leader, and this very wadded up red and grizzly, natural grizzly hackle tip fly. I took the time to unwind it and inspect it all. I like to check other people's stuff out. And uh, I got the fly wet and was really impressed with just the way it moved in a variety of current. And it was a basic shoulder, a very clean shoulder tied on like a pro tube with four hackle tips. And there, that was my first, you know, encounter with that. Of course, you know, there's the pick your pocket, the tackle tips and whatnot, but this was a very simple shoulder. shoulder. And that is the basic evolution or the inspiration for this. Of course, Ed has done some stuff like this too with tubes and whatnot, but so I, I wasn't copying Ed. <laughs> 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 it was that, I called it the Ho River Hobo initially, but the, the concept of this was also founded in the Skagit at a time when I was tying these flies that were very camouflaged, or that was my idea, was to make them as camouflaged as possible, hence the name Camo Squid. So it's to make them as look like they were trying to hide. Not like they were a beacon, but like they were trying to hide. And some of the best takes I ever had were on those flies. To this day, they're still clear water and crushing grabs on a fly that looked like it was trying to hide. You could see it just yeah. fine. <laughs> and, you know, speaking of that fly, it seems, and you're talking about crushing grabs, you know, it's pretty indestructible in itself due to the, the tools you use to make this fly what it is. Yeah, correct? I'm pretty rough on them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the composite loop, I'm, I'm very fond of a toothbrush, a firm toothbrush and a soft toothbrush. They're both very, uh, they're very functional tools. And the reason for that is, is tying, using a dubbing loop to build a fly, brushing them out down to a desired thickness and being able to fold them back like a hackle allows me to apply them in a way that makes them, you know, a, it's a composite from front to back. My flies are constructed, designed, so they're incredibly durable. And then after I get them, after I've assembled them, and but even before I put a hook on all of them, I get them wet and I brush them out even further, you know, and I brush them out to the point where they were like, Trevor likes to say they've, they've, they've lived a few days, they've fished a few days before I even swing them in the river. So... <laughs> It's, it just kind of, you know, it softens them out and it gives them exactly what they're going to be, you know.